Hi everybody, welcome back. I hope you're all keeping well and busy with your art making. I'm about to show you how I created these two lovely um, mixed media sculptures and they are uh, birds that I see regularly on the beautiful Lake Macquarie in New South Wales, Australia. And I use a combination of materials, resin, found shells and rocks, uh, resin skins um, and uh, a, a clay, sculpting clay, sculpty, and it was quite time consuming but it's it was a lovely process and I thought you might be interested in doing something a little bit different. So um, if you uh, enjoy this video please like and subscribe and if you would like to help support me so that I can buy the materials to create the the artworks and make videos for you. There is a link in the description and you can donate to my um, PayPal account. Thank you very much to the people who have donated. It makes an enormous difference and I have been able to buy some more resin so that I can create these sculptures. I have uh, actually done eight of these sculptures and there's, there's more of these sculptures on my uh, website. The website link is in the description if you'd like to have a look at the rest of them. I've done some all different sorts of birds with all different sorts of materials. So if you want to have a look at more. And this is just a lovely, lovely technique. This is a beautiful black swan that, that you see not in the winter. It's usually more in the summer months on Lake Macquarie. And they're just so beautiful and precious, which is why I've used uh, silver leaf. So they're precious, but they're also fragile. So there's a fragility and preciousness about the animals and birds and plants in the Lake Macquarie uh, district. So I went down to the edge of the lake and collected some stones. I went to the beach, collected some little small shells and different sized rocks and bits of wood and I'm going to make two bases for my little sculptures and what's most important when you first start is to make sure that they are level so I've got this on a piece of wood just to make sure it is level underneath because this is a silicon bowl and it it's easily gets out of level now these are just little pools some little pools of resin. I just had some leftover resin. I just made some little pools. And I thought that would make a nice base for these these little um, sculptures I'm doing. And you'll be able to see that because I wanted to create some. I want to do a transparent base. And I'm doing the same with this one. This is just a pool pool of resin. I just poured some very subtle blues and greens and black and white. And I used um, the green, green, uh, the cosmic blue, and um, iridescent jade in there with some black, just black paint, and the angel white. That's the blue res colours. And, um, and now I'm going to to pour some very a, a sort of a thin layer to begin with of. Of clear resin and I'm going to then collage some of these bits and pieces into it and let it cure and I'm going to then slowly build up the layers of resin because I don't want to get any um, bubbles so I've got some crackling chips that I made so it's just crackling that I painted onto plastic and then pulled it off and made it into these little chips and I've got some acrylic diamonds and and that's how I'm going to start okay so here I decided to to actually cut some of the the resin pores that I did and create some really nice sort of shapes so I had a pair of very sharp scissors I softened the resin with with the heat gun so that it was easier to cut and then I started cutting into, into the resin 
pool with my scissors and I created a kind of a a feather feather like shape seeing these sculptures were birds I thought a sort of a feathery shape and almost a watery sort of shape as well just to see what, what that would look like rather than just having a blob like that at the bottom I wanted to create a little bit of a bit of design I guess to the base now this resin actually this pool of resin was reasonably hard it still was still curing I guess but if you use a heat gun you can you can heat up a thin layer of resin and still work with it. And then I poured a, a thin layer of resin, so you need to do it slowly because otherwise you, you get too many bubbles. And every now and then I use a heat gun and try and, and push into the resin to get to get some of the bubbles out. Now the tray I've got there is is just a plastic tray and I put a piece of plastic over the top of it um, and I didn't just put it over the top. I put actually put double sided tape between it and the and the and the tray so that it would stay flat. Because when you use the heat gun, it actually shrinks. The plastic will shrink up and create all sorts of weird shapes, and it'll curl in on itself. So you have to put put some double sided tape to hold it in place. And now I'm just starting to collage some of the the found elements the shells and the rocks. I ended up taking that stick out and just, just didn't work. It was going to be too much, really. So, I mean, the whole time, you know, I'm thinking about my design, the composition. I mean, this is, this might be a sculpture, but it's still, it's still a, it's a, it's very illustrative. It's a very narrative kind of base. It's realistic. So I'm thinking about kind of a, a mini landscape, I guess. So I'm, thinking about the space between the objects and putting objects close together to create a united shape and sometimes I create some smaller dot dots with the little rocks. Actually those rocks were, were like a pumice so they it was interesting because they, they actually floated, they didn't sink to the bottom so that was, that was a nice little thing that happened which I wasn't expecting because they're so light. And so I was spreading them around, so kind of like a dot. So I'm thinking about this as like a painting, that they were like a dot, and the other forms were were solid shapes. And um, you know, trying to remember that I'm going to put a bird on top of this, and I didn't want, I wanted to have a space for the bird, and to be placed on this. This is a base, so I'm thinking about that the whole time. I mean, you could do sketches before you started, but I was actually working quite intuitively. I was really experimenting. I hadn't done anything like this before. Well, I've done bird sculptures before, but I hadn't done uh, like a resin base like this before. So it was really quite experimental. So the little bits that I'd cut out of that pool, pool of resin, I, I actually used the bits that I cut out and put them in, and I created a little bit of a, a swirling linear linear pattern in the, in that base and I just kept adding adding a little bit of resin I didn't get too deep because if you go too deep you get bubbles and I put in some of those acrylic diamonds which really created some interesting effects it actually diffuses the light and um, and creates a real reflective effect so here this is of course the next day and the resin is still still soft and I'm placing it around a, a, it's a plastic tube covered in plastic so nothing sticks. And I just I did this just for a while just to, to get the resin to bend a little bit. Because I wanted to create a, like a container for this one, a container where the resin would, would reside for, for the sculpt, for the rest of that sculpture. And see, see how the acrylic diamonds were refracting the light it was really really lovely. I loved that, so I used that in all of these sculptures. I used those diamonds, um, so it bends the light. So it created a real lovely little mini little mini landscape, a sort of stylized mini landscape. And I used some of that crackling crackling um, paste, a crackling paste that I dried, and I sprinkled them along the rocks. So because along the rocks on the lake, there's a lot of 
uh, oysters stuck to the edges of the lake and and where birds have been sitting and there's bird you know bird poo <laughs> all over them so it sort of is that sense of a little bit of a relate relating to the reality of of what you do see on the lake so I was I was quite pleased with 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 that one I even made a little calm you know, where you see piles of rocks so I did a little tiny pile of rock and put them on so here you see now I'm, I'm creating a, a reservoir for for the resin pour for the base so it, it had been I'd left it for quite a few days so it was really definitely hard and then now I'm just um, walling off the sides of that curve and it looked, I was really pleased with it. It really looked like a piece of glass. So I had a just an area for where I was going to put the put the resin and all the collaging the rocks and the shells. So the little tiny, really little landscape, mini landscape at the side, at the well at the back, at the back of the sculpture. So I fiddled around for ages trying to work out which what what would look good, and I. I wanted to keep things in place, so I put, used a bit of super glue. Now the tape that I put around the side, you need to put it on really, really hard. I've used um, fabric tape uh, because otherwise it leaks. It did leak a little bit, um, but you need to be really, really stick it well. And so I'm just pouring in my first little layer of clear resin and pushing into it with the with the heat gun to get as many bubbles out as I could. So every now and then I'd go back and get a little bit more out. And then I mixed up some, uh, this is the cosmic blue. And I decided to add a bit of the blue to the base of the other one. So I created another, a separate base which I was going to sandwich together. And then at the same time I was creating on a, another base for another one that I did at the same time. And this is the the Lorez the jade, lovely jade colour. So I'm using the cosmic blue and the jade. And then I just put tiny weeny bit of those colours into the base of this one because I, I wanted it to be transparent. But I wanted a little tiny bit of colour. And I was also putting more of those... Um, acrylic diamonds in there too because I wanted to get some reflective effects and it also pushes the colour away and so you get a transparent area and so it looks like bubbles because I decided with the other one I didn't want it to be completely transparent I wanted to have a bit of blue coming through because I liked the blue that was coming through the the actual um, cake tin so I decided to do that little extra bit of blue I mean it's probably the wrong way around I should have started with that so this is where I'm applying some this is spray paint so white spray paint straight from the a can of spray paint and I just sprayed it into a small container and just dropped it straight into the resin it's not been mixed in resin or anything straight in and it, it kind of it creates some interesting effects and I thought it would make some really nice little swirling effects around the edges of of the rocks and the shells so it looks like the the water is swirling up and creating a bit of a a, a current of of, of um, foam foam and sort of debris looking and I thought it worked pretty well I was quite pleased with that I did use a little bit of the angel white on that one. That was another sculpture that I did. But it, it worked quite well. So there's quite a lot of those diamonds, acrylic uh, diamonds in there. And see how the diamonds, they push, push the white away so you see through to the colour underneath, which is a great effect. In the end I had to sandwich that to the bottom, to the bottom of the other one. I just poured more resin on, on top of it. Now I'm about to start the sculpting of the bird. So you pull out a long piece of foil. So this is for the armature for the, the bird sculpture. So I've scrunched it up and I've got a photograph that I took of the pelican and 
I'm using that to to make sure I get the, my proportions correct. And so I'm just pushing it into into a basic shape. And of course, the armature has to be smaller than the actual size of the bird because I'm I'm going to put clay over the top of it. So here I'm just using now some very soft modeling wire and I just wind it around like a spiral all the way around the body and this will give give the sculpture a lot of strength so that it'll be strong and it won't it won't bend and it will keep its shape for when I apply the the clay over the top and when I get to the beak part I just I just do one long piece of the wire up to the end so just a long strip and then you can bend it into into shape and then I started to knead the dough, knead the clay this is what I'm using is super sculpty it's quite a strong clay and I've used it before so I felt comfortable using it and you, there's a lot of kneading it was actually quite cold so I needed to um, really play with it for a long time. You can soften it by putting it in the microwave for a few seconds if it's cold. It's easier to work with when it's warmer. And so I was making a couple of flat pieces of, of clay, so about a oh, quarter, quarter of an inch thickness. Not, I'm trying to create a, a thickness that was consistent the way, all the way over the sculpture so that it would it would um, dry and harden at the same rate. So when I did a join I would scratch, I don't know if you've done any clay work, I would scratch the surf both surfaces or I was sandwiching and pushing together to make sure that that there was a, a, a textured a textured surface so that the join would be um, would adhere properly together. So I was using the same techniques that you do with, with modelling with clay, mineral clay. And, you know, I just started modelling and pushing the shape around, adding little bits of clay where I thought that I needed some more dimension. And, you know, I would rough up, see how I'm roughing the surface up and then putting it on top so that it would join well. And then I started to work on the beak. So I'm trying to keep the thickness of the clay consistent all the way across the, the sculpture. And trying to make sure there's not too many um, lumps and bumps. So if you make if you make the clay too thin, you, you'll start to see all the, the texture of the thing you have your armature underneath so you can you can make it thicker if you want to it just means that your armature needs to be smaller and so here I'm building up some dimension so that on the head and I'm creating a ridge a ridge for the edge of the the beak and creating a, an area for the eyes so making sure that the eyes are symmetrical in the right, same spot on both sides. And I'm constantly, look, constantly looking at, at the little model and making sure that, um, that it is symmetrical. So I'm looking at it straight on from different angles to make sure that it's, it's consistent on both sides of the bird. And then I created some little, little knobs for the legs and I pushed, I pushed the, um, some wood dowling through the bottom to make sure that that's, that's where the dowling was going to go for the legs. And so I created a spot for the, for the bird's legs. And now I'm, get, I'm finished and I'm going to put it into the oven. So I put it in the oven for about 20 minutes at 130 degrees Celsius. Um, that's what they recommend on the box. And I built up a little bed for the pelican. 
so that it wouldn't bend in the heat when it's been cooked in the oven. And this is the next day after it has been cooked and it's been cooled off and I'm sanding it. So you can sand Super Sculpty really well. So I'm sa I sanded it a lot. So I started with a sort of a gritty sandpaper and then I worked to a finer sandpaper in the end. And now I'm applying some gesso. And in, I did two layers of gessos and I also sanded and I also painted again. And then I applied a kind of a deep, a deep blue colour because I was going to put silver leaf, le silver leaf over the top of this. And that's my swan. So I'm working on them both at the same time and I'm painting the swan's beak with some red and I, I did put I did paint the, the swan black to start with but then I decided that I needed to keep the consistency of the the silver I've used got gold leaf on some of my other sculptures and that sort of that concept of uh, of precious and um, kind of almost like the metal, metallic look about them, um, almost like sort of like a trophy, I guess. So I then changed the colour to the same blue as the pelican. And now I'm applying the, this is the adhesive for the silver leaf. Um, you need to put paint all over and have a really good coverage of it. And I left it. I left it to dry for a while until it got tacky, so it's quite tacky still. And now, now I'm applying the the silver leaf, which is is a little tricky. <laughs> um, you get I ended up getting stuck a bit. I don't know whether I'm particularly good at this, but um, <laughs> I think I I got better as I went. And then you need a, a brush or something to push it down with. So wherever you put the adhesive. It's going to stick to it, and the the reason you put that dark blue behind it is because um, you know sometimes that's the thing about you know silver and gold leaf. Sometimes you, it doesn't quite adhere in, in all all over, and you get little little parts where you see the blue, which is which is nice because it gives it a kind of a kind of an aging look. So then I I pushed it on all the way over. And it's quite fiddly and you don't want to push too hard, you don't want to break anything. So I was being very careful. So the idea when you're doing silver and gold leaf is to get it as flat as possible. So each sheet you put on to try and get as get it on as smoothly and in one sheet if possible. Which is not, which is quite difficult on, on a three, on a three-dimensional object. Um, but you know, I just kept at it, and I didn't worry about trying to get all the little loose bits off until later. I wanted to make sure that it was stuck well before I started pushing off the little bits of silver. So I was just checking to see how it looked. So every now and then I'd check and see it. Now I did a lot of sanding. So when, when that was cured, I actually went and got the sander and I sanded the edges and around the back because some of the, some of the clay, some of the resin had, had leaked around the back. So I did a lot of sanding and I curved the edges of that, that container as well. So here what I'm doing now is creating some uh, resin skins. So these will be the wings of the swan. And I also created some wings, wings for the pelican. So I'm just uh, swirling it on into like shapes, and you know, varying the thickness too, because I wanted it to be thinner in some at the ends ends of the shapes. So that would be like the feather shapes, and I wanted some irregular shapes. I didn't want it to be a perfect oval, and I put a little bit of the, the blue in there, I think it was a different blue, it was just sort of a softer sky blue and, and a little bit of the green as well. So I was trying to relate the colours to the base, the bird and the base using the same colours. 
and see how I pulled out the skin so there's kind of a feathery edge because I knew I'd use that part of the skin. So I poured this on too. These are cat mats and so it, it's easy to get it off. So I was making some wings for some other birds that I did. All at the same time. And I added some little bit of the crackling, the crackling chips that I'd used. So there was a consistency of, of, of texture in the base and, a, and in the bird. So there's a relationship between the base and the bird. So that all those things, the, the texture and the colour and the applied, you know, things that I applied to the base, I actually had some of that in in the wings. So there was a unity between the base and the sculpture. So all these kinds of things are things you've got to think about. It's not just a matter of just putting these, you know, we're doing a base and putting something on top. I'm constantly thinking about the the design, the shapes, the you know the relationship of of the shapes and the colours to one another. And and here we go. So this is the this is the next day when it's it's still very soft. You see the crackling chips in there. It moved a lot. See how it moved quite a bit too. I try not to apply a lot of heat because if you apply a lot of heat, it actually moves too much. So I didn't put too much heat on them. Very small, just waved it over the top. And now I'm I'm tracing over the bird with a bit of tracing paper and a pencil, and just sort of getting a rough shape of the wing, how big I want it to be. So this is the wing shape. And then I look for a, you know, an interesting part of the resin skin that I think is going to work. You know, I'm looking at the at the pelican, and because the pelican has some white, white in their wing, white and black, so a lovely contrast. I knew that was going to really make 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 the sculptures uh, contrast so important in any design composition. So. I'm, Cutting around there, and you know, I left some little, little loose sort of shapes at this end, and just checking to see how it was going to look. I thought that was was working well, and then you know, I turned that tracing paper over because I want to do the other side because it's the opposite side, and then I found another piece of the resin skin that would would work quite well. And that would would match. I mean, it needed to match the wing on the other side. It had the same sort of lovely contrast. And all these little bits of leftover resin, um, I will eventually use. I'll probably collage them together and make another some sort of a picture with them. And then. Then I, I used super glue to stick them onto the, the actual base sculpture. I cut some, some feather like shapes on the end. Sometimes I actually got the feather like feather shapes and actually since then I've done some wings and actually created the feathers feathers with the resin. Um, because I waited for the resin to be quite thick, so you actually can create feather shapes with resin when it's when it's hard. So I didn't need to cut cut some of the the sculptures that I've worked on since. And so I did some little ta tail feathers as well. So I'm cutting those little tail feather shapes at the end with my little very sharp scissors. I love these scissors. A student gave them to me which was really lovely when I was teaching. And this is some super glue I'm using and um, that was exciting using super glue. I mean I got stuck to everything, you know, it was awful. I've, I've actually lost the ends of my fingers from doing this. In the end I couldn't use gloves, I got gloves stuck to everything. It was a bit of a nightmare. 
I've, yeah, the ends of my fingers, I can't even, I don't think I've got any fingerprint on the end of them now. <laughs> and there we go. So I pushed it down and neatened it up. And I was pretty pleased with that. Worked out quite well. And of course I did the same with the this one. And then I I put the little their little pieces of dowel, the legs are just are just dowel, small pieces of, of dowel, and then I painted them. Because when I painted the beak a more uh, I didn't have it pink, but it just didn't work. I, I mean, it's another design thing. I, I couldn't work out why it wasn't the beak working. And I realised what it was, was that everything was shiny and metallic. So the beak, the beak just didn't work. So I had to make the beak shiny and metallic. So that's what I did. So here I'm applying my final layer. Now, I did quite a few layers of resin. I didn't show you all the layers, but I did actually take a quite a few layers to build up the, that water in there. And I'm rubbing it all over the bird and all over the, the edges where I sanded so you can't see the sand marks. And you can see underneath I've got some blue tape. That's just painter's tape to stop the resin from, if, from bleeding underneath. So I'm just wiping to make sure I don't get any drips underneath there because I wanted to keep that really lovely sort of glass effect that was happening. And you know, every now and then you've got to uh, make sure that, that you don't get too many drips coming off the bottom of the bird. I actually did end up with a drip on the end of the bird's beak, um, but I actually quite liked it. It kind of looked nice. That little drip was like a drip of water. And here I'm doing the same thing with the swan. So I took the swan through the same process. I didn't show that, it's too long. And I did the same thing. I did the silver leaf and then I cut those wings out the same technique. And I'm applying the final layer of resin. And I, I sandwiched that blue base to the, the first base that I created. I just put it back into that silicon cake container and and poured resin on top of it and then pushed the, the clear base on top. So it was quite deep, that the base on this one. And I was spreading it out and I had I had actually sanded, you can see that the edges I'd sanded a bit because there was a bit of a sharp edge. So I wanted a nice rounded edge so that the resin would flow over the over the edge. And because underneath this sculpture I've got some blue painters tape to make sure it doesn't roll around the edge and I'll be able to get it off easily. Well I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have like and subscribe if you would like to know anything about what I've done. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, if you would like to donate to my channel then there is a link in the description. If you would like to look at more of the sculptures that I've created and more of my artwork go to my, my uh, website. There's a link in the description. Uh, this was a very interesting project uh, process and I found out a lot about about how to deal with laying resin and um, casting resin really I guess. Um, so I th hope that you have learned something and have been inspired as well. I'll see you next time. Have fun guys.